Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank uh, Dean Rudd, uh, Dean Letzo, President Freeman, for um, inviting me here today. Um, Louise, it's always good to see you. You know, and you, have, you bring Doug with you. It's always good to see you, Louise. You know, um, but thank you, Senator uh, Doug Jones, for your kind words and um, warm welcome, but also for your service to our, to our country. Now, as a person who's worked with you for uh, over 20 years, uh, I know the depth of your commitment and the extent of your uh, achievements. You have too often been a, a lonely voice in the fight for justice, but you've always prevailed in courtrooms and at ballot boxes. Yours is now a welcome presence in Washington, D.C. at this trying time for our nation. I'm proud to call you a good colleague and a treasured friend. It is, it is a, a privilege to be with you all today with so many distinguished faculty members, elected officials, uh, committed activists, as well as future leaders. And as, as always, it's good to be here in, in Memphis. Now, I, I love this city. I love its energy. I love its sense of possibility. The feeling that, as Dr. King once described it, that something is happening in Memphis. Now, I also deeply admire this city's ability to showcase its, its extraordinary progress without glossing over a heart-rending past. Now, like so much of our nation, Memphis has been defined by great achievement, but also by great tragedy. From the brave Memphis State 8, the first African-American students to set foot on what was then the Memphis State Campus in 1959, to last year's successful Take Them Down 901 initiative that toppled too long. <laughs> that, that, that toppled two long standing Confederate memorials. The city's forward movement, I think, is, is evident. Its, its healing is evident. And yet, the scars of our past can still be seen and felt, not only in this city but in our nation as well. Now, today we gather to commemorate the, the, the deepest of wounds, the passing of a man, but not the death of a dream, the senseless murder of our nation's most committed, most courageous, and most consequential drum major for justice, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. But on this day, on this day, we must also commit ourselves to making real the dream that animated his, his too short life. Now, for half a century now, the anniversaries of Dr. King's birth and death have provided important opportunities not only to celebrate and reflect upon his extraordinary life, but to consider where we now are as a nation, to take stock of our progress, to take responsibility for the work that remains before us, and to rededicate ourselves to the dream of racial, social, and economic justice that is Dr. King's living legacy. 